Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this day. We are asking that again, by the power of your Spirit, you might speak to us. You may open our spirit to receive from you. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank God for the opportunity again to look into the scriptures together, trying to study what is the nature of the Word of God. There may be several conceptions in the mind of people about what the Word of God means. Some people may think that the Bible is a book that tells so many stories, that tell uh, the histories of uh, a particular group of people and how Jesus came and died and all this. Some people may think uh, the Bible or the Word of God is a means of communication, uh, just an idea somebody had expressed, but we believe that a proper understanding of what the nature of the Word of God is, is basic for the right attitude uh, to the Word of God any man can cultivate. Now if you don't know what the Word of God is, you will not be able to know what to look for when you open the scriptures to read about it, and you don't know how to release your, your life upon that word. Now we're going to take off today by looking at what Jesus himself said about the word. And we're reading John chapter 6. John chapter 6 and verse 63 says, and I read from King James Version, It is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, from this statement that the Lord Jesus Christ made, on talking about the word of God, or the word that himself speak, or the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, um, from this passage, you will seem to understand almost immediately that the word of God as Jesus is putting it forth to us here is not just an ordinary idea. It's not just a form of thinking. The Bible said the words are spirit and they are life. We're going to expand on that later on. But I want you to consider that uh, when we look at what we call spirit, spirit is something that uh, is invisible. Spirit is something that you cannot touch, but is very much alive. Spirit can move from one point to another. The spirit can do something. The Bible says angels are spirits, and we know that they are beings. And from this scripture, the Lord Jesus is saying the words that he says speak, they are spirits, and they are life. That means they contain life. They contain a quickening ability to create life wherever they go. Now, so we are looking at this particular scripture from the Lord Jesus Christ, that the word that goes forth out of his mouth is not just expressing an idea or an opinion, that the very words themselves, they are spirit and they are life. And that is very, very necessary for us to understand how to approach the Word of God. 
Now I want you to go back to a scripture we referred to before in Isaiah 55. Now in Isaiah 55, you will again discover something about the word of God that God was speaking about in that scripture, Isaiah 55. This time we read from verse 9. Isaiah 55, 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and the and returns not there, but waters the earth, and makes it to bring forth and board, that may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Now, if you study that scripture very well, you will notice that verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Now from, from this particular scripture, it will seem to you as if the word of God is alive. It's a living thing. It's a living spirit that can go and come back. Look at that scripture. Say, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It means the word of God can go and return back to the Lord. It means when God sends any of the word, any of his word out, he's sending it out with a view that it should go and do something. And after it has done that thing, it should report back and say, concerning this matter that you sent me to go and do, I have accomplished it, I have finished it, and this is the result. The Bible says, the word that goes forth out of my mouth, shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It means that the world can do something. The world can act. The world can operate. It means the world can get things done, can set things into action, can supervise the world, I mean the work, and bring a result back, and bring a report back, and say, concerning this matter that you sent me to go and do, in Brother James's life, I have done it this way, I have done it this way, and this is the result. The Bible says, the word that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void. Now, as, a, as somebody wants to work with the word of God, this is very, very basic in our understanding. For us to know that all the things that God has spoken, they are spirit. And they are alive. They are not just a dead, dry thing. They are not just something that is stagnant. They are alive. They can move. They can translate from one point to another. And they can create life wherever God sends it to go. That's why Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, I want you to look at a situation where um, a centurion came to the Lord Jesus Christ asking him to go and pray for his sick daughter who was on the point of death. And as they were going, as they were going, the man noticed that when Jesus Christ speaks a word, when he says, rise up and be healed, that word will just go without touching the person, without touching the cripple, the man will just stand up and begin to walk. The man noticed that there is something supernatural about the words that come out of the mouth of Jesus. And so the man suggested, he said, Master, it's no more necessary that you go to my house. I'm a man of authority. and I'm a man under authority. When I say, you go here, it goes. I say, you come here, it comes. And I say, you go and do this, it does it. He said, so the man said, Lord Jesus, there's no need, sir for you to follow me to my, my house before you can do something for my daughter. Why don't you send your word? Why don't you just speak a word and my daughter will be okay? Now Jesus Christ quickly confirmed that he has not seen such a faith in the land of Israel since he has been ministering. What are we trying to bring out? There is an understanding in the heart of that man. 
about the nature of the things that proceed out of the mouth of God. The man seemed to believe that just as he will send a sojourner and say, you, quickly carry my car, go and bring my daughter from school, and that thing will be done, and the daughter will return to the house, because a sojourner, a living man, goes to do something. So also the word that comes out of the mouth of Jesus Christ can go and do something and bring out results. So the man just said, speak a word. Just send the word and my daughter will be okay. And indeed, the Lord Jesus just said, I wish that your, your daughter be okay now. And the word seemed to have gone there and right there immediately within that same hour, the, the daughter was restored. Now what are we trying to say? We are saying that a proper understanding of the word of God, of what is the nature of the word of God, is basic and is necessary for a proper perception, a proper real, uh, faith in the word of God in our lives. Now, just as that centurion man saw that the word of God is not just a, an ordinary speech, not just an ordinary imagination, not just a means of communing an idea to another person, but the word of God that comes out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ is spirit and is life. He goes out to do something. He goes out. He moves from one point to another. And so when the Lord sends his word to any man's life, we have every reason now to agree with Isaiah 55 that it must accomplish the thing where to have sent it. Which means God can call his word out and send it to go and do something. And after sending it to go and do something, God is sure that that word must prosper. That is, it must succeed. It must not fail. It must not be frustrated at all. Now, so we are seeing in the beginning of our discussion on the word of God today, that the word is spirit. That the word is just like any living thing moving from one point to another to do something. And so when we look at the word of God in the scriptures, in the Bible, we are going to see how does the word that has been written on the pages of the Bible, how do they become the spirit word in our lives? That's another matter we are going to look at later on by the grace of God. Now, but see pressing on this part that the word of God is alive. That the word of God is active. That the word of God is not just an idea, but it's spirit. They are living oracles of the Lord. Now, I want you to look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, and we'll read verse 12. Hebrews chapter verse 12. I read from King James Version first. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to deal. Now, we are looking at the word of God from King James Version. It says the word of God is quick and powerful. I want us to take it from other versions so that we can have a proper understanding of that scripture. Uh, Good news says, the word of God is alive and active. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts all the way through to where soul and spirit meet, to where joints and marrow come together. It judges the, the desires and thoughts of man's heart. There is nothing that can be hid from God. Everything in all creation is exposed and lies open before his eyes. And it is to him that we must all give account of ourselves. New English Bible says, The word of the Lord is alive and active. It cuts more keenly than any two-edged sword. Piercing as far as the place where the life and spirit joints and marrow divide. It seeks the purposes and thoughts of the heart. There is nothing in creation that can hide from him. Everything lies naked and exposed to the eyes of the one with whom we have to reckon. That's verse 12 and 13. We look at Finnish Mother English very quickly. Verse 12. The word of God, or the word God speaks, 
is alive and active. It cuts more keenly than any two-edged sword. It strikes through to the place where soul and spirit meet, to the innermost intimacies of a man's being. Now what are we saying there? Here again, the Bible is seem to talk about what the Word of God is. That the Word of God is alive. That the Word of God is active. That the Word of God is not just a dormant thing. The Word of God is not just a dry thing. The Word of God is active. The Word of God is alive. The Word of God can go whenever God sends it. And because it's powerful, it penetrates onto anywhere. Which means from this particular scripture, should God be sending his word to your life? Supposing what God wants to deal with in your life is between your spirit and your soul. God doesn't need to struggle and run up and down and begin to shake your body. All that he needed to do is to speak his word. And as he speaks the word, the word goes out to accomplish something for the Lord. The word goes straight. The Bible says it cuts more keenly. Cuts more keenly more than any double-edged sword. Unto the place where the soul and spirit come together. And if the matter is not even within your spirit or within your soul. The Bible says if the matter that God wants the word of God to go and deal with in your life. Is between the joints and marrow. We know that marrow is in bones. And joints are where muscles and bones come together. With divers, tendrils and all the things of our body. It is possible for God to send the word to touch your physical body. To do something in your body. In bringing healing and deliverance onto your body. There are times when the word of God has been sent out uh, and people that are crippled have stood up and they started working. Because the word is able to go to the joints and marrow and restore it. And the Bible says, concerning everything that God is sending his word to accomplish in our life. There is no way, there is no other alternative. It must prosper. It must succeed. It must accomplish that thing. It must finish it in total. And it must come back with a complete report and say, yes, that which you are sending me to do in Brother So and So's life, I have accomplished it. That's what the Word of God is supposed to do in our lives. The Word of God is spirit. The Word of God is life. The Word of God is powerful. The Word of God is active. When we say something is living, it means it can reproduce. And so we mean that the word of God can go and create life. It can go and reproduce something in the life of a man to which God has sent it. Let's, let's take uh, an example. The Bible told us that the Bible told us that God spoke to Abraham and said, by this time next year, you are going to have a son. In the book of Romans chapter 4, the Bible began to expand on that word that God spoke to him. That even though, as at the time that God was speaking unto Abraham, Sarah was as good as dead, because a woman died. She had passed the age of reproduction according to physiology. But then, even Abraham himself, the Bible says, he is also dead. Himself was as good as dead. But then here is God who spoke. And because they knew that God is able to call into existence those things that be not as though they were there. As soon as God said, By this time next there, you are going to have a son. As far as they were concerned, they believed that God who spoke is able to bring his word to pass. That the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is able to produce the result. Is able to accomplish that thing. And so the Bible said, they believed. They did not stagger through un unbelief. But they rather rejoiced. Because they judged that God is faithful who has spoken. And is able to call into existence those things that be not as though they were there. And so the Bible said, by faith in the word of God, Sarah had power to conceive. It was not because there is anything physiologically possible in her life again. But now you see the spirit world going to do something. The spirit world going to produce in a dead womb. That's what the word of God can do. The word penetrates. It goes everywhere. It goes into the womb. It goes into the joints. It goes into the marrow. It goes into the spirit. It goes into the soul of a man and produce results. 
The word is alive. The word is spirit. So the word of God is not just what, what uh, you just open the Bible to read. Because we know that several people have read the Bible theologically. They have read the Bible academically. And you have nev- never seen any result in their life. They are not even born again. How possible that the word of God can do that? Is because they have never touched the word of God. They are touching something. They are touching the letters that seem to house the spirit of the word of God. We are trusting that some time to come, by God's grace, we will be able to analyze. In a bid to study how to receive the word, we will be able to look at what the word can do in our lives. Now, having look at the fact that the word of God is spirit, having look at the fact that the, spirit, the word of God is alive, and that the word of God is like a sword, sharper than any double-edged sword, uh, any uh, any double-edged sword, he can cut into as he can cut asunder uh, uh, things, whether they are in the spirit or in the soul. It penetrates to the joints and the marrow. It goes everywhere wherever God sends it. It means there is no barrier when the word of God is moving, when the word of God is operating, when the word of God is released from the mouth of God. There is no barrier to it. It must operate. It must produce results. To the glory and praise of the Lord who sent it. Now again, we want to go forward and see what the word of God again is. Uh, so that when the word begins to come out, and when we begin to uh, ask you to think of the effect the word of God is supposed to have in your life as an individual, you will know what to expect. Now if you look at Jeremiah chapter 23, Jeremiah 23, and we look at verse, we look at verse 29. Again, you see what the word of God is. So it's not my word like as a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. It's not my word like as a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Again, the word of God is not just uh, a human idea, it's not a dream. If you take time to read Jeremiah chapter 23, and you study from verse, uh, verse 21 down to verse 29, you will understand that God himself demarcates between human ideas, human dreams, human imaginations, and his own word. The word of God is so definite. The word of God is so clear that God said, you cannot compare my word with ordinary dreams. It's like comparing wheat and chaff. What, what, what do they have in common? Chaff can be a container for the word of God. But the, I mean, chaff can be a container to the wheat. But when wheat comes out, there's no, there's no nutrient in chaff at all. Now, so the Bible is talking about the word of God as a hammer, as a fire, and as a wheat, as something that you can plant and it will grow as something that you can eat and it will give you nourishment. The word of God as a hammer. When it comes into your life, it comes to put you in shape. Sometimes the word of God can, can come hard on a life and it will seem as if God hated you. No, that's God's way of putting you into the right shape, into the right perspective according to his design purpose. Now, the word of God also is like fire. It burns. It burns with the aim of purifying. When the word of God comes thoroughly to a man, it burns down all things that are of the flesh, all things that are not congruent with the will of God in your life. The word of God will put fire on it. It will kindle it away. And it will purify. As we use furnace of fire to purify and to separate impurities from metals and from uh, precious materials, so also God applies his word in our lives as fire. And it burns. And that's what we are saying. Nobody can say he has had the word of God and there is no effect. You can't touch fire and you will not be burnt. Fire cannot touch you and you say, well, I didn't even know when that fire touched me. Impossible. If it is fire, it must burn you. And so the word of God is not just an idea that people read and talk about and feel good about it. When the word of God comes, it must leave a definite impact on the life of men. As hammer, it breaks. 
He breaks the address of the rocks. That's what the Bible says. Say, like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. And so we believe. Because of the nature of the word of God. It doesn't matter your own situation. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter how stubborn or how hard you are being. Let the word of God come like a, a armor. It will break things into pieces. You will see a proud, arrogant, insolent man. When the word of God comes to him, he's changed into a new man. He's made a new creation. He's broken down. He can no longer be hard. He can no longer be proud. He can no longer be self-willed. Because the word of God of praise in such life. The word of God as fire purifies. Now, because of our time, we want to stop at this point. We want you to now think. The word of God is spirit. The word of God is life. The word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword that comes into your life. Now, whatever be the situation, will you open up your heart and say, Lord, give me this word. I just don't want to read the letters of the Bible. I want to come in contact with your word in my life. I want to come in contact with the power that is in the word. Let it penetrate into my spirit. Let it penetrate into my soul. Even if you are sick, wherever you are, we are trusting God that as you begin to hear the word of God, it can penetrate into your bones, into your marrow, and it can set things right. May God bless you in Jesus' name.